Hello everyone and welcome back to Farmer Joe Homesteading. Last year we put out a video on hatching goose eggs which quickly became one of our most views and most commented on videos. Goslings are one of our absolute favorites here on the homestead and are something that we absolutely love to raise and raise every single year. We wanted to make some improvements and clarify a few things that have been asked about a lot in the previous video. So we decided to make another video this year going in a little bit more detail and showing a little bit more on candling and things like that for this year to help clear up any of that and just to make a little bit better of a video. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click that notification button. We put out a new video weekly on updates here on the farm so you won't miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching our video. Today, we are going to start the incubation process for our goose eggs that I have been collecting over the last, I think it's the oldest egg is about 11 days. So quite a few goose eggs from our girls. It's a little bit early, but it is time to get these in the incubator and start making some precious little goslings for the 2023 season. Now, I forgot to count so as we put them in the incubator, we can count them and then I have a tally on how many eggs we put into the incubator today. So with goose eggs, I like to write down when the egg was laid. So this one says 26, so it was laid on January 26th. And then I have an X and an O on each side because I hand turn my goose eggs. I like to know um, which side they're on. So when I put them all in the incubator, I'm gonna put them all with the X up so that I know which side they have been turned to and then we'll rotate them that way. So I have the incubator inside here. I made sure that it was set around 100. The thermometer in here um, is just a dial one and so it's not digital. So as long as I know it's around 100, I know that it's gonna be a good temperature for all of the babies but you're gonna look for around the 99.5 to 100 mark just like you would with a chicken egg Right, so that is 21 goose eggs in the incubator. So we're going to leave them now. I'm gonna keep an eye on the humidity. So when you add when you add eggs and they come up to temperature, the humidity and the temperature is going to be quite wonky inside the incubator, especially because they're very large eggs and they're gonna take a little while to warm up. These have been sitting in my back cupboard where I put all of my hatching eggs. And so it's probably between 15 to 20 degrees Celsius back there. So about room temperature and they're going to need to warm up now to the 99.5. So I just keep an eye on my temperatures when I put eggs in because it's gonna take a little bit for it to stabilize. And I don't like to add water until I know that the eggs have come up to temperature because eggs are full of moisture and they're going to release moisture. And I've had before where I add water at the same time I put my eggs in and then when everything comes up to temperature my humidity is very high because I had added water prior. So I added water yesterday when I plugged the incubator in just to try to maintain around a 30 to 40 percent. So now I put the eggs in I'm going to leave it for two days and then we will start the hand turning process. All 
All right, guys, it has now been two days or about a day and a half. So it is time to start the turning process for these goose eggs. So today we're going to start turning. It's morning right now and then we'll turn in the afternoon and then again before bedtime. So I usually do a total of three turns per day with the goose eggs. This is also a good opportunity to add in water when the humidity is a little bit too low. And that is it for the first five days. I will see you guys in five, three more days and then we start the cooling and misting process. So you're going to continue turning them three times a day for the first five days. All right, guys. It has now been five days of incubation for these goose eggs. So it is time to do a cooling and misting for these eggs. So I'm gonna show you guys this process and how I like to cool and mist my eggs. I like to put a towel down and remove the eggs and put them all here on the towel. Now that I have the eggs sitting here, because it is early on for the first five to 15 days that you do the cooling, you can do the cooling for five to 10 minutes. After that, you're going to increase it to 15 minutes. So I usually let them sit before I miss them. And in the time frame, I like to candle them. So I don't candle them every single time because you're going to do this once every single day. Um, so I, I usually do it at night um, just because that's when's convenient for me. So it does happen to be dark out tonight now. So I'm going to go ahead and candle these eggs while I wait the five to 10 minutes before placing them all back into the incubator. Now, this is our first batch of eggs that we are doing for the season, which means I'm not expecting it to be 100% for their fertility. So what I'm planning on doing is checking all of the eggs for development. Any eggs that are quitters, I know are fertile, so I can include them in my fertility rate. But any eggs that don't have anything, I'm planning on checking and breaking open and looking for that bullseye to see if they were fertilized. I know some of these eggs probably got a little bit too cold, and so it is very probable that some of these eggs are not actually um, developed just because they were too cold, but they were still fertilized. So I'm hoping for a really high fertility rate. I'm hoping for over 80%, but we'll see what we get on these eggs today.
Well guys, that was extremely disappointing. I have one egg developed out of 21. So I'm gonna have a lot of work to do cracking these all open and seeing what's going on. There was a couple other eggs that looked like they started developing and died. And I know I had some issues with my incubator in the beginning. The temperature got up to 102 and I slowly kind of brought it back down and the humidity can be finicky. So I am wondering if that's maybe something that had happened. The egg that is developing <clears throat> has a two on it. So then I know that that was laid on February 2nd and I put these eggs in on February 4th. So it, it's hopeful that if that egg is fertile, that that should mean that all of the new eggs now since the second should have a better fertility. So we'll be cracking open a lot of eggs to see what's going on and see where our fertility is at. And for now, I guess I'll show you guys the misting of this single egg. And don't worry, there is a lot more to this video. So we'll see where we go from here. All right, we'll mist our sad little egg and it can go back in the incubator. All right guys, so I have here a full week's worth of goose eggs again. So we're gonna start all over and put all of the new eggs in here hope our one little one makes it if not i wouldn't be surprised um but we'll be hopeful and see how the rest of this hatching process ends up All right guys, so now that we're at the lockdown stage, I wanna do a quick little rundown for everybody just as a recap of what you're going to do up until the lockdown point. For the first five days, you're just going to turn the eggs three to five times a day. On day five, you're going to do a cool down for five minutes and the misting. Once you get to that stage about day 10 you can lengthen out the cool down time to about day 10 continuing to do the misting daily and then by day 15 to 20 you can start increasing that cool down time to 15 minutes and you're going to continue that until the end so day five you start five minute cool down and misting Day 10, you're going to do a 10 minute cool down and misting. And then about day 15, you can start extending that to day to 15 minutes. You're going to do the cooling and misting every single day. You can pick whichever is easiest for you, either morning or evening. I tend to do mine right before bed. Make sure you set a timer so that you don't leave your eggs sitting out and forget about them because they will most likely die. So that is the rundown of what you're going to do before you get to the lockdown stage. All right, guys, we have officially made it to day 26 today. Now, technically, you should be doing lockdown day 25, and it's not really technically a lockdown with the goose eggs. You just stop turning them. Um, and then lockdown doesn't start until they actually have an external pip. 
So <laughs> with the <laughs> goose eggs, you're going to stop turning on day 25 and find the optimal position for hatching. So you're going to find where the air cell has a dip. And I'm going to look at some of these eggs and I will show you um, what that dip looks like. And you're gonna wanna make sure that it is pointing up because that is the most likely spot that they are going to make their external dip. All right, so here's one of our eggs that's on day 26. So that is what I mean by the air cell dip. So I'm holding this egg even. You can see that there is a dip right there in the top. So I'm going to want to keep this egg up this direction for the lockdown phase. Now you can see some really good veining in there. This egg looks really nice and healthy. I can see the baby's heart beating in there. So this is a great example of a day 26 egg and that air cell dip there. Now, when it comes to lockdown, I always know when it's time to lock down based on my air cells and what the goslings are doing inside the egg. I don't tend to do a lockdown until we have the internal pip, which I had showed you guys in the previous clip of a, a gosling that had actually internal pip. So usually at that stage is when I'll lock down. Now I continue to mist the eggs up until there are visible out external pips because continuing to mist them will make the shells softer and easier for them to pip. The hatching process for goslings is actually really long. Once they have the internal pip, within 24 hours you'll notice the external pip, and it can take quite a long time until you see a zip. It can take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours before they actually start zipping and come out. For our brown Chinese geese, they usually start pipping on day 28, and it's not uncommon for them to not fully hatch until day 30. So it can take quite a lot longer than say chickens for them to actually hatch all the way out. So make sure you just watch and observe and don't intervene too soon. And it, it just, some of them can take a little bit longer. Some of them will hatch on that day 28, but it is not uncommon for them to take a couple of days to fully turn, rotate in the egg to come out. So, we have had a few technical difficulties while we've been doing the filming and our incubator that I was using for hatching actually died after I'd moved the eggs over to lockdown. So we've been hatching in my big cabinet hatcher, which has been going really well, but it's really hard to film in there um, because this glass is very scratched. It's uh, new to us. and 
so it it just makes for a really poor quality film but I have tons of videos of goslings hatching over the last few years so I'm going to attach some videos of goslings hatching from previous videos for you guys to see and there you have it guys we have had quite a bit of a journey getting this video done um, but I definitely wanted to share it with you guys because the video we did last year was very popular and I wanted to be able to show you guys a little bit more detail this time around. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below if you found this video helpful at all. We would love to hear from you guys. Best of luck with your hatches on goslings. They are such a joy and we love our goslings here on the homestead. Thank mm -hmm. you.